behold the cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. God has a worship. Behold the cross upon which was hung the salvation of the world. Come on. Behold the cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Come on.
I had to feed my family. Although I knew full well how the Romans used these beams, I could do nothing to prevent it. Each morning I would go to the hills to cut down strong pieces of timber and drag them home for carving. Once chiseled, they were piled high in the Romans' courtyard. It was not a task that I cherished, but the money I made put food on the table. Mine was a poor family, and it was my duty to take care of them. However, how these cross beams were used was not my responsibility. It was not mine to question. My first responsibility was to feed my wife and my children. Oh, when I think back to the days of my apprenticeship, when I first took up the trade of a carpenter, I can recall the joy I felt when carving a table from a coarse piece of heavy wood. I've always thought of myself as a skilled carpenter, not the best, perhaps, but certainly one in love with the craft. It's an art, you know. It's an art to mold and to fashion from rough beams a smooth and well-fitted piece of furniture. It takes an eye of care and compassion. This may sound strange to those of you who do not know the feel of wood, but to a true carpenter, you must respect the grain and the bend of each and every beam that you cut, or it will not fit well. Oh, I know, I may sound like a dreamer to you, and believe me, I was years ago. Then reality hit me with the cruelty of a world gone mad. My ideals seemed to fall away like the bark of a dying tree. With each problem and setback, I became more pessimistic and uncaring. Even the love of my craft seemed to slowly crack into the splinters of callous indifference. My art that I loved became a tool of death, a means of suffering, and I didn't even seem to care. I'll tell you this. It's one thing to say I did not know when finding fault with your actions. It's another thing entirely to know that your actions contribute to the heavy burdens placed on the shoulders of another person and to say, I don't care. Not knowing is ignorance and it can be understood. But I think not caring is one of the evils that Christ came to overcome. Now you may wonder why I have come to speak with you tonight. I, Christ's crossmaker, I, Christ's crossmaker, who watched this holy man carry upon his shoulders what I had chiseled with indifference and hewed with arrogance, and because of which I became sick with shame. Come to beg you to watch closely as Christ carries his cross before you and to ask yourself if by your silent indifference have you helped to carve his cross. If so, put down your hammer and your blade and your chisel. For I guarantee you, no one carves a cross for another to shoulder without one day having to carry it himself.
stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and you with me. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. In the Lord's Supper, Christ is present by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he offers his body broken for our sake, and his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you. And we bless you for creating the whole world. We thank you for your promises to your people and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. And living with you, he prays for us. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup, and we proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took breath, and after giving thanks to God, he blessed and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, and he blessed it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink all of you, for this cup is the cup of salvation, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins in my blood. Whenever you drink from this cup, remember me. And so every time that we come to this table and receive here this bread and this cup, we remember and we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. This bread and this cup, these are the gifts of God for all of us, the beloved children of God. I invite you now to receive the bread of life broken for you and the cup of salvation poured out for you. Thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and the food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service, that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
prayers this evening will be a bidding prayer. I will offer an intercession, following which I ask that you reflect for a few moments in silence. Dear people of God, God sent Jesus into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs of eternal life. Let us pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church of Christ throughout the world for its unity and witness and service, for all church leaders and ministers and the people whom they serve, for all the people of this presbytery and for all Christians in our community, that God will confirm the church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them. For the President of the United States and the Congress and Supreme Court. For the members and representatives of the United Nations. For all who serve the common good. That by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. <clears throat> Almighty God, we kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that justice and peace may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the hopeless, the, the destitute and the oppressed, and all who suffer persecution, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of God's love, and that God would stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, hear the cry of those in misery and need. In their affliction, show them your mercy and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have departed this life and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of the Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. Eternal God of unchanging power and light, look with your mercy on your whole church. Bring to completion your saving work so that the whole world may see the fallen lifted up, the old made new, and 
and all things brought to perfection by him through him all things were made our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever and finally let us pray for all those things which our Lord would have us ask let us offer to God the silent prayers upon each of our hearts this night Hear all the prayers of your people, Lord, for we bring them to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
the love of God, and the presence, power, and peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all, tonight and always. Amen. Amen.